I'm Margaret Price, and I'm very appreciative that Harold asked me to record an annotation for the dialogue between Dr. Gami and Dr. Kushner. I'm an associate professor of rhetoric and composition at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia, um, and my specialization as a researcher is the rhetorics of disability, specifically mental disability. Mental disability is a term that um, was coined in the way that I use it by Cynthia Lewicki Wilson, um, who argues that using the term mental disability as opposed to mental illness um, indicates a number of different things that are useful um, in terms of understanding this sort of disability. First, that it is a disability, um, something that from a disability studies perspective is influenced, some would even say constructed, through social context rather than being something that inheres in an individual body. I should also mention though that um, I'm pretty flexible about language and um, so as I go through um, this response, I'll be periodically using terms such as um, mental illness, labeled with mental illnesses, um, diagnosed, I think that um, these are all terms that do specific different kinds of cultural work in specific contexts. And as a rhetorician, um, I'm less interested in trying to find some mythical right term, um, and I'm certainly not interested in trying to mandate what terms other people use, um, with the exception of hate speech, I guess. Um, rather, I'm interested in thinking about, as Tanya Tichkowski has said, what our articulations of disability are saying in the here and now. So what cultural work are specific terms doing and for what reasons. So that's sort of a, a precis of why I use mental disability. Um, and I explain that at more length in my book, uh, which is titled Mad at School, Rhetorics of Mental Disability and Academic Life. Now, um, as I read this dialogue, I first read the transcript and um, I then viewed the dialogue um, on my computer, um, I was struck by a lot of different things. Um, I think it's a, a fascinating treatment of what it means to attempt to talk about psychiatric disabilities in history um, and what it means to question notions like normal. Um, I think that some very rich points come up in the course of this. I also think that the dialogue um, as a whole tends to, um, tends to set up two different camps in a sense. Um, one camp is people who are not diagnosed mentally ill and in the other camp are people who are diagnosed in that way. Um, and these camps are um, demarcated, I believe, uh, through the use of pronouns. Um, I was very struck when I was first reading the dialogue and then listening to it um, by the way that the pronouns operated here. So for example, um, early in the dialogue, I'm reading from the transcript now, um, Dr. Kushner said, um, it's this odd thing that we can't talk about the best examples of what it is we see on a current basis. And Dr. Gami responds, agreeing, saying, right, we can't talk about our current patients. Um, and they go on to, to discuss this point. The issue that they're discussing at that time is the need to maintain confidentiality in case histories. And they're talking about the fact that psychiatric case histories are rarely published anymore. Um, what we mostly see are large statistical studies because confidentiality is all but impossible to maintain in a truly detailed case history. Um, and I, that's true. I agree with them on that point. Um, I'm very struck by the fact that here, and pretty much throughout this dialogue, um, the, the two interlocutors are we, which presumably are doctors and not mentally disabled people. And the they is the patients who are mentally disabled. So one thing I'm hoping to do in this response is to suggest that um, this perspective might benefit from... Uh, the, the joining of, to it of the perspectives of those who do have lived experience of mental disability, such as myself. Um, I've received a number of mental illness diagnoses over the years. Um, most people with diagnoses have this sort of array of um, different diagnoses that have come to us. 
And um, my diagnoses range from the relatively mundane um, depression, anxiety, to the um, more unusual and um, to some sort of dramatic, such as borderline personality disorder. And I mention this because um, I think it would be easy in listening to this commentary to assume that I too am one of the we who is not mentally disabled. Um, unless I specifically mark myself as a mentally disabled person, um, which I, I do do in professional contexts. Um, but which is also a, a very difficult decision, obviously, and um, a decision that is, is very complicated in its effects. Now, that issue, the one of disclosure, is um, one that's of great interest to me as a rhetorician. And in fact, my next book project is focused on the rhetorical event if you will, or the rhetorical situation of disclosure of mental disability. What does it mean to disclose such ability, such disability? Um, what happens when such disclosures are made inadvertently and non-verbally? Um, for example, if one has a panic attack in front of one's colleagues, um, we could say that um, something has been disclosed, although not intentionally. Um, in what ways do different audiences take up disclosures of mental disability, and what are the, the contexts, cultural, political, medical, scholarly, that circulate around these disclosures. Um, and with Mark Salzer of Temple University, a psychologist, and Stephanie Kirschbaum, a rhetorician at the University of Delaware, I'm working on a um, mixed method study, um, both a quantitative and qualitative study, um, that aims to gather more information about disclosures of this kind. Now, I would suggest um, to Professor Gami and Professor Kushner some of the, um, the issues that they run into in their dialogue might benefit from a disability perspective. Um, that is, the perspective of people with mental disability. Um, for example, later in the dialogue, um, Dr. Gami is talking about the problem of stigma and um, the issue that um, mental illnesses are heavily, heavily stigmatized. And he argues that his work, which in A First Rate Madness posits that um, mental illnesses may have beneficial effects, which enable one to be a greater leader in times of crisis, for example, um, he argues that this might reduce stigma. Now. As, again, as a person with lived experience, but also as a disability studies scholar, I would encourage Dr. Gami to complicate that question more. Um, I think that holding up persons with mental illness as exemplars of leadership, for example, as sort of super people in times of crisis, might not have the stigma-reducing effects that he intends, that he hopes. Um, specifically because to posit that a person with a disability is sort of super, quote-unquote, because of that disability is in some ways only the converse of saying that that person is sub because of the disability. Um, and in disability studies, this would be referred to as the supercrip myth, um, the notion that a person with a disability must be or may be wonderful in other areas specifically because of that disability, that they may have these savant-like capabilities. Um, so that's a, a question that I, would, that I would pose to Dr. Gami and Dr. Kushner both. Overall, um, I'm really very, um, very appreciative that this book was written. Um, I'm really excited about all the different approaches to mental disability that have emerged in psychiatry and post-psychiatry, particularly in the last decade. Um, I think that the work is becoming very interesting, very complex, and I also think that the disciplines of psychiatry and humanities-based disciplines and then also social science dis disciplines are starting to work together in, in really interesting, rich ways. But there is a trend that concerns me, which is that um, still people diagnosed with mental illness so often in these rich collaborations seem not to be a part of it, seem still to be part of the them instead of the us. And so um, in composing this response, I am I'm hoping to broaden who, who that might be and um, to say, 
I think everyone can have a productive part in this dialogue and it will make the dialogue better overall.